Well, famously, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, and that apparently applies to the Mandalay Bay shooting as much as anything else. A judge in Clark County, Nevada, has ordered MGM Resorts International, the company that owns the hotel, to preserve all evidence related to the shooting, including gambling records, surveillance tape, and anything else that might be relevant. The order highlights the glacial pace of discovery in this case. It's been more than three weeks. Stephen Paddock's motive and a lot of his behavior remain unknown, and there's not even a settled timeline for the shooting. Why is this taking so long? Dan Bongino once worked for the Secret Service and the NYPD, and he joins us tonight. Dan, this doesn't seem like the kind of order that would come more than three weeks after a shooting, both because it would be obvious, of course you don't destroy evidence, and if you were going to send an order like that, wouldn't it be immediate? I'm, I'm confused. Well, you're not wrong to be confused, Tucker. You can add this to the list of perplexing things about this case, which has me and a number of my law enforcement friends completely baffled. When you have a cooperating witness, I mean, just a quick example. God forbid you're walking down the street, somebody holds you up with a knife, but he drops the knife at the scene, the bad guy. When the cops show up, you don't throw the knife away, nor do you need a judge's order right. to tell you to turn over the knife to said law enforcement officer. I, I, I can only think of two possible scenarios here. One completely implausible, that the Mandalay was a co-conspirator in this, which is nonsense. Or right. number two, there's some kind of hostility or a trust gap developing between law enforcement and a Mandalay. Nothing else makes sense, Tucker. There's no other way to, to square that circle. Well, the second scenario, I think, makes a great deal of sense, and there's evidence to support that's true. So Mandalay Bay managed the public statements of Jesus Campos, who was the security guard who was injured in the leg, um, and put him on Ellen, and apparently restricted his appearances to Ellen, who basically is an employee of MGM, um, or their sponsor for show in any case. So would that kind of behavior suggest to law enforcement these people are spinning and we better keep them under control? You know, Tucker, they would. And if, and if I could and just be candid for a moment, you know, I, I always default on the side of law enforcement when there's yeah. a question of because I, I just think they have a tough job. And unless you can show me evidence, they did anything wrong. Um, you know, I tend to default on their side there. But, me too. you know, really, with with the way this has been handled between Mandalay's just gross PR operation in this with Compost and the law enforcement timeline all over, I mean, you have to start to say to yourself, this is one of the largest mass murders in American history. The public has a genuine, very real interest, Tucker, in finding out what the hell happened here. I get it. You're the cops. I was one. I totally understand your job. Yes. But this isn't. This wasn't a burglary at the 7-Eleven. The American public is, is, is understandably a bit frightened. Like, what the heck happened? Were we dealing with a psychopath? Were we dealing with a radical, a terrorist? What's going on? And Mandalay, I have to be honest, is just not helping here with this just butchered PR campaign. They don't seem to be at all, and they have a different agenda, which is avoiding getting sued, of course. There are, unfortunately, a lot of lawsuits brewing right now. The most confusing thing to me is, what if the feds take charge? We know the FBI has, by their own explanation, dozens and dozens of special agents working on this. Why doesn't a spokesman come forward from the DOJ, from FBI, and say, here's the state of play, here's what we know? Why, why haven't they done that? Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I, I'd love to come on TV and go, hey, here's a really great answer from Dan Bongino. <laughs> I just don't have an easy, it, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's obvious to me that there have been problems from the start with basic timeline elements of this crime. Tucker, the first thing about a crime is the sequence of events. And, and like you said, why doesn't the Bureau, which by the way has custody of the evidence, I only know that because the sheriff said it at a press conference, which says to me they're the lead investigative agency at this point, why aren't they taking over and saying, here's what we're going to do, here's how this is going to work, here's when we're going to release information, here's what we know now? I, I, I don't know. Is there pushback from the sheriff? I, I, I don't know. Right. I'm just not sure. Well, it's helpful to know that you don't know because it makes me feel <laughs> less, less crazy just, because I find this genuinely confusing. I've never seen anything like this. Dan Bongino, thank you, as always. Yes, sir.